Property Losers All the Time by E.E. E. Cummings. I had an uncle named Sol who was a born failure. Nearly everybody said he should have gone into vaudeville, perhaps because my uncle Sol could sing McCann. He was a driver on Christmas Eve like hell itself, which may or may not account for the fact that my uncle Sol indulged in that possibly most inexcusable of all, to use a highfalutin phrase, luxuries, that is, or to wit farming and be it needlessly added, my Uncle Sol's farm failed because the chickens ate the vegetables, so my Uncle Sol ate a chicken farm till the skunks ate the chickens. When my Uncle Sol had a skunk farm, but the skunks caught cold and died, and so my Uncle Sol imitated the skunks in a subtle manner, or by drowning himself in the water tank, but somebody who'd given my Uncle Sol a Victor Victrola and records while he lived presented to him upon the auspicious occasion of his decease a scrumptious, not to mention splendiferous funeral, with tall boys and black gloves and flowers and everything. And I remember we all cried like the Missouri when my Uncle Sol's coffin lurched because somebody pressed a button. Down went my Uncle Sol and started a worm farm. So I'm sure that you've been able to notice straight away how unusual this poem is. Firstly, we notice that there is very little punctuation and in fact, just a set of brackets near the end we also notice that there's unusual capitalization. For example, the speaker I is a lowercase i, whereas Uncle Sol is an uppercase s. So there's a respect being shown to Uncle Sol, which is not shown in other places. So he foregrounds the importance of Uncle Sol by following the rules when normally he wouldn't follow the rules, like he hasn't for the speaker, lowercase i. So it's a story about Uncle Sol, and from what you've heard, you'll also have noticed that Uncle Sol was a failure. He's called that in the second line. And that the only thing that Uncle Sol succeeds at is starting a worm farm. And what's quite clever about the shape of this poem is that while Uncle Sol's coffin lurches and falls and goes down into the ground, we see the, the, the sentences become shorter and shorter, like the coffin going down into the ground. We also see that the only thing that Uncle Sol was any good at was starting a worm farm, and that's because he died. Another thing you may have noticed is the unusual word choice. Some of the colloquial words like highfalutin and splendiferous, uh, perhaps even scrumptious, is something that's often used in a quite sort of colloquial way. Okay, let's take a little closer look at who the poet was. E.E. E. Cummings is Edward Estlin Cummings and he was born in 1894 and he's known for his unusual punctuation, unusual shapes of poems and for his uh, for neglecting uh, uppercase letters. For example, his name, E.E. E. Cummings, was changed legally to lowercase letters only. He wrote 12 volumes of verse and his linguistic experiments ranged from the newly invented compound words to inverted syntax, which you may have noticed in the poem. He varied text alignments and space lines irregularly, and we've seen that in this poem, uh, with the coffin and the way it goes down, and used non-traditional capitalization, which we've also pointed out, to emphasize particular words and phrases. In many instances, his distinct topography mimicked the energy or tone of his subject matter. Cummings' moods were alternately satirical and tough or tender and whimsical. All of these descriptions would fit this poem. He frequently used colloquial language, yes, again in this poem, and material from burlesque, burlesque and the circus. So we're going to take at one of his more unusual poems. Take a look at this poem and see if you can decipher what it's about. If you look at the first word, and jumble the word order, you may realize that this poem is about a grasshopper. And if you look at some of the other words that you might be able to decipher, you may have noticed the leap. So that's quite clever in the middle of the poem, the leap. Let's take a look at the poem in normal language. Grasshopper, who as we look up now gathering into the leaps arriving to become arrangingly grasshopper. So this is one of his more experimental poems, very unusual and difficult at first, but once you've realized what it's about, it's not difficult at all. So we're actually quite fortunate that we're looking at this poem because it's far simpler and more straightforward. 
It's simply about the speaker's uncle Saul, who was not good at anything except dying and starting a worm farm. So that's the only place that he succeeded. And that's obviously deeply ironic and satirical. And um, one of the things that Cummings said about his poems is, don't try to enjoy it, let it try to enjoy you. Don't try to understand it, let it try to understand you. So if you ponder that for a little while, I'm sure uh, you'll, you'll realize that actually all you're meant to do is enjoy the poem and immerse yourself into, in it. We're gonna look at each stanza now. Stanzas one to three. I had an uncle named Sol who was a born failure and nearly everybody said he should have gone into vaudeville perhaps because my uncle Sol could sing the can he was a driver on Christmas Eve like hell itself which may or may not account for the fact that my uncle and then stanza one ends there and the enjambment that occurs because the sentence is not finished and there's no punctuation. The enjambment occurs between stanza one and stanza two with Sol's name in stanza two, beginning the first line. So one of the first things that might seem unusual to you is the word vaudeville. And I've included a poster of the hurly-burly extravaganza and refined vaudeville over to the right. And we'll take a look um, at that. What do you immediately notice about the structure? Note the absence of formal elements and punctuation and what impact does this have? So if we look at the poem, we've already discussed the word I, which is lowercase. So the speaker shows a kind of humility and by following the rules for soul and using a capital S, he shows a respect for this, this man who we're told in that second line is a born failure. So it's interesting how that is foreground for us. All right, as discussed, the word vaudeville is a farce with music. In the United States, the, the term connect, connates a light entertainment popular from the mid 1890s until the early 1930s. And so that would have been around about the time E.E. E. Cummings was um, writing. That consisted of 10 to 15 individual unrelated acts featuring magicians, acrobats, comedians, trained animals, jugglers, singers, and dancers. It is the counterpart of the music hall and variety in England. And that definition's uh, also taken from the Britannica. So note the tongue-in-cheek tone of the poem. Do we believe Uncle Sol was good at anything? Which words tell us that? So no, we don't think he was good at anything because the second line tells us that he was a failure. What about like hell? How is that phrase usually used? And can we assume then that he may not be much good and affordable either. So in the first stanza, the word like hell comes at the end of um, the uh, fifth line in the stanza. And it says, my uncle Saul could sing the can, he was a drive on Christmas Eve, like hell itself, which may or may not account for the fact. And so the phrase like hell is normally used to say that something is not true. So if you were to say, like hell, you're actually saying, oh, whatever, that's definitely not the case. So it's tongue in cheek then. He may have been very entertaining while singing the song about McCann, who was a driver, a diver, but in fact, um, it's not, he's not actually that, that talented, he's just funny. Sol indulged in that possible, possibly most inexcusable of all, to use a highfalutin phrase, luxuries, that is, or to wood farming, and be it needlessly added, my uncle Sol's farm failed. Okay, so again, we've got the word failed, and so we know uh, that he definitely was a failure. Note the words that belong in brackets. By not using any, how does it affect the rhythm? So if we go back to that, where would we have put in brackets? So Sol indulged in that possibly most inexcusable of all, open brackets, to use a highfalutin phrase, close brackets, luxuries, that is, or to it farming, and be it needlessly. So let's look again at the question. How does it affect the rhythm? Well, you'll notice that when you've understood the poem and are reading it, that you find yourself pausing there anyway, where the brackets would have gone in. Cummings also places some words alone, and in other places uses syntax that causes you to pause, despite the lack of punctuation. 
So he actually kind of shows how punctuation isn't always necessary, how you can insert it yourself. The enjambment pulls you into the next stanza, which we've noticed throughout. My Uncle Saul's farm failed because the chickens ate the vegetables, so my Uncle Saul had a chicken farm till the skunks ate the chickens when... So note the third stanza's tales of woe are told in a flippant, almost sing-song way. These failures are deeply tragic. How do you think Uncle Saul might be feeling about the failure of everything he tries his hand at? And yet the poet's tone is, is sort of lightly mocking, um, gently mocking, and uh, not as serious as perhaps um, the, the tale warrants. My Uncle Saul had a skunk farm, but the skunks caught cold and died, and so my Uncle Saul imitated the skunks in a subtle manner. Right, the tragic failures of Uncle Saul continue in a way that almost seemed like a ditty. It's almost sing-song, playful and upbeat. However, the content belies this playfulness as he drowns himself in his water tank. So, like the skunks who die, he dies. And he's good at this. He's good at drowning himself. There's deep irony and euphemism in claiming that Saul's suicide is subtle, because of course it's not. Or by drowning himself in the water tank, but somebody who'd given my Uncle Saul a Victor Victrola and record. So I've given you a little picture there of a Victor Victrola. We've all seen one of those old-fashioned record players. And records while he lived, pre presented to him upon the auspicious occasion of his decease. So perhaps... His decease is auspicious. It's something uh, to note. It's noteworthy uh, in a positive sort of way because it's the only thing he's been any good at is dying. A scrumptious and not to mention splendiferous funeral with tall boys in black gloves and flowers and everything. So that's also quite unusual to use the word scrumptious not to mention splendiferous. And we see that they're crying like the Missouri, which is hyperbole. The Missouri is a river, and they're not literally crying like that river. So if we have a look at the, the sibilance, the alliteration of the S is sibilance, and it foregrounds the words scrumptious and splendiferous, continuing the flippant and playful dic diction throughout, despite the quite serious and tragic story of Uncle Saul. So it reads almost like a success story, but of course it isn't a success story. The funeral's not typically described as, splend as splendiferous or splendid. The only success they could celebrate was his death. Poor Uncle Sol, actually. So it's very tongue-in-cheek. It's wry, it's satirical, and it's mocking throughout. He finally succeeds by becoming food for worms. Uncle Sol finally succeeds at farming. His success is enclosed in brackets. To highlight the irony, his only success was in death. Poor Uncle Sol, and perhaps... Those uh, brackets also symbolize the coffin or the earth closing over poor Uncle Saul. And that is Nobody Loses All the Time by E.E. E. Cummings.